Hello, and welcome to Beyond Curriculum, the professional development series for ASC tutors at College of the Siskiyous. Today, in our study skills video, we'll be exploring active reading strategies. Reading is something you just can't get away from when you're in school. But did you know that there are techniques that can make reading more effective for students? We'll talk about some of these techniques that you can share with your two T's. You can even use them yourself. So active reading includes strategies for engaging with reading material in ways that help to optimize learning. So, in other words, you're just getting the most out of your reading. Basically, active reading is broken down into three really simple parts. Pre-reading, reading, and review. That's it. So first, let's take a look at pre-reading. This is where you're just familiarizing yourself with the material. It gets your brain ready to sort of receive the information that you'll be reading. First of all, you want to get an overall impression of what's going on in that particular chapter. And a good way to do that is actually to start at the end of the chapter and read the chapter summary first. That helps you to know what it is that you need to pay attention to when you're reading. Uh, other good things to look at are margin notes. Often textbooks will have little blurbs in the margins. Those are good to take a look at when you're pre-reading. And any words that are in bold or italics kind of signal to you that that's an important thought. So pre-reading really just primes the reader for the information to come. While you're pre-reading, it's a great idea to try to make predictions. So what you're trying to do is engage with the reading material. You don't want to be passive about it. This is, after all, active reading. So ask questions. Try to think about what's going to happen in the chapter. And next we come to reading. And here is where a student will spend the bulk of their time reading and digesting the material. One great thing to do is to read aloud. I know that in my literature classes, sometimes I was trying to wrap my brain around some Middle English piece and it wasn't making sense. And my instructor said, try reading it out loud to yourself. And I did that and it actually really helped. Plus, my cat really enjoyed the recitations that she heard when I was in that class. The other thing you can do is think aloud. Yes, I just told you to talk to yourself. <laughs> it's actually a great tool for processing information. Sometimes it works better to process information out loud. And you don't necessarily need another person around to do that. And while you're reading, it's a good idea to look for signpost phrases. These are things like, most importantly, or in contrast, or on the other hand, these things signal important concepts, and they let you know that you kind of need to be paying attention. Another thing you can do is visualize while you read. Create mental pictures. Take this information and make pictures in your mind, and that will actually help you to remember the material. You'll have something to sort of go back to when you're maybe taking an exam or writing a paper. Those mental pictures will tend to stick with you. And then there's highlighting. Highlighting is a great way to read actively. You're going through and deciding what are the important concepts to remember. Section headers are a great thing to highlight because they sort of set the tone for the chapter. Important dates and key words. Once again, words that are in bold or italics are a good idea. 
And um, it's important not to over highlight because then your book sort of becomes a, a visual cacophony of yellow highlighter. If you have a tendency to want to highlight a lot, I would recommend using different colors of highlighter for different types of information. And then that will help your brain to sort through everything when you're looking at the page. You should ask questions while you're reading. You can ask them out loud, you can just ask them silently, but who, what, where, how, why, the classic questions. Ask these questions, see if you can come up with the answers in the reading, and this way you'll really be engaging with the reading. But if any of those questions are left unanswered, then you have great material to bring to class with you uh, to add to a class discussion. You can raise your hand in class, you can ask what it is that you still have a question about, and that will help not only you, but other students as well. Annotating text is also a great habit to get into. You just write in your book. Now, if you have a book rental, you might want to use pencil, or you can use little page flags or sticky notes if you need to return your book to the bookstore. But this is a really valuable technique. Some people call it talking to the text. And you simply write down your thoughts, your impressions, questions that you have right in the margins of the book. And now that the bulk of the reading is done, it's a good idea to go back and review. And when you review, you're simply going over the key points to what you've read already. When you review, testing yourself is really valuable. One way to do this is to read for about a half an hour, then you put the text away, and then jot down key points from memory. See what you remember just from that half hour of reading. Jot things down and then go back to the text. You can go back to the text and look for the things that you didn't remember. And then you can go on to the next section when you feel like you've gotten what you need to get out of the section you've just read. Another thing to do is summarize what you've read. Now, this little picture on the right side of the screen here is it's a little basic. This works actually really well for if you're taking a literature class and you need to summarize a story. I know this looks really simple, but simple is good. It helps you to distill what you've read down to the minimum, to the key points. Another thing you can do is just use a first, next, and then template. And you can use this, whether it's a literature class, a science book, if you're looking at math formulas or statistics equations, this works really well. You just divide the information up into first, this happens, this is the next step, and when that's done, then this happens. And sometimes it's a good idea to break things down. And that's a great thing that you can do with your two T's is have them summarize for you out loud. It really helps. Another thing that students can do is to retell the story or share facts. They can do this not only with a tutor, but with another student or a friend. I actually have a friend who shares recaps of what he's read on Facebook. And maybe that sounds funny, but the point is he gets A's in his classes. So it's just another way of engaging with the material. Every time you get that information to go through your brain one more time, it helps you to store it away. Armed with these strategies, your two T's can read the heck out of their textbooks and get the most out of them. So share these techniques. There will be a version of this video that's available for students to watch. 
So that may be helpful. I'd just like to thank you for being a part of the ASC, ASC team. And I'd like to thank you for watching.